the South Today Bulletin, proudly brought to you in association with MOLMAP, the skin cancer detection specialists. Tonight on the South Today, a Dunedin animal rescue organisation could be in strife following a complaint from a member of the public. Some Canterbury Fire volunteers are brushing up on some of their key skills in anticipation of a busy summer season. And an iconic Dunedin outdoor swimming pool is rolling back the cover just in time for spring. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Hannah Wilkins. A Dunedin bird rescue organisation is just holding on by a talon after a complaint threatens the future of the conservation charity. Bird Rescue Dunedin is flying in turbulence following a single complaint putting the non-profit charitable organisation in jeopardy. Founder Sue Cook has cared for more than 400 birds each year for over a decade but has been told to dismantle nine aviaries she has in her backyard without consent. She claims to have an understanding with the Dunedin City Council that allows her to have the aviaries unless they upset the public. But now the council's told Cook she has six months to take down the birds' homes and needs consent to rebuild them under new specifications. Cook claims all her neighbours were happy with the setup, saying she doesn't know the nature of the complaint laid against the rescue facility. The enclosures have always undergone regular checks by the Department of Conservation and the DCC. Dunedin Bird Rescue is the only operation in the city that takes in any bird at any time, relying only on donations from the community to keep the operation running. The DCC says staff have visited the site to look into the complaint from a member of the public, but no official notices have been issued at this point in time. In Dunedin, the South Today. Wild weather last week caused major destruction across the South, but the torrential rain and cold temperatures may have a silver lining. Fire restriction notices for central Otago and Upper Waitaki were lifted on Tuesday morning, reverting the southern regions back to an open season. This comes after the restricted season was put in place a month earlier than previous years in an effort to account for the El Nino climate systems predicting high fire risk. Last week's heavy rainfall is also helping firefighters to dampen the Pukaki Downs scrub fire, which has been burning since last Wednesday. Fire and Emergency NZ says they're constantly reviewing data to keep an eye on fire seasons, but say people should continue to exercise caution with fire activities. Canterbury's firefighters are still trying to get on the front foot against the expected busy, hot and dry summer fire season, despite the restriction lift in central Otago. Fire and Emergency New Zealand are running training days to upskill key volunteers in safety and prevention methods, hoping to reduce the number of incidents in the region. These volunteer firefighters upskilling themselves ahead of their busy season. Key personnel from Canterbury's fire brigades are being trained in fire safety and prevention methods in an effort to combat the predicted hot and dry summer. Fire and Emergency New Zealand are concerned about the conditions the El Nino weather pattern is set to bring, worried about the influence it will have on starting fires. We want to get as much education out there to the members of the public and the communities, so um, by upskilling the volunteers it's, um, it's another way that we can get that messaging out. Around 20 volunteers from the Selwyn and Banks Peninsula areas attended the weekend training session, covering numerous topics from fighting and preventing scrub fires to dealing with car crashes. The training has been put in place so those volunteers will go back to their stations to pass on their newfound knowledge to their colleagues and the wider community. Fire and Emergency New Zealand says there have been a number of fires in Canterbury recently, caused by people not properly extinguishing their vegetation fires. In the last couple of weeks we've had um, burn piles that haven't been extinguished properly um, and um, they might have been put out two or three weeks ago but with the nor'wester winds they've flared back up and um, ignited. FENZ will be holding a similar training event this weekend for around 60 volunteers from a number of North Canterbury stations in Christchurch, the South today. Amid the water crisis in Queenstown, another district council believes there may be more boil water notices coming for the regions. 
The Waitaki District Council says it would not be surprised if water regulator Taumata Arawai issued compliance orders for, to other territorial authorities. This comes in the wake of last week's cryptosporidium outbreak in Queenstown, causing more than 30 gastro cases in the area. The Waitaki water supplies have had continual upgrades since the early 2000s, but a compliance order would require regions with non-upgraded supplies to have a boil water notice until treatment barriers were in place. Taumata Arawai confirmed it will send letters to councils about treatment for protozoa, outlining their expectations and regulations going forward. Dunedin's only outdoor swimming pool is starting to warm up as lifeguards prepare for another busy season of big splashes. Many locals are getting excited to dive into the St Clair hot salt water pool, but poor weather may rain on their parade. Taking a plunge into the St Clair hot salt water pool. The covers are rolling off and the water temperatures are rising for the outdoor swimming pool, which is set to open its doors on Sunday morning. Staff were being shown around the facilities on Tuesday as part of an induction, getting ready to welcome back locals for their six-month season. We cover our expectations. We also cover um, things like water treatment, making sure that they know how to do chlorine readings, pH readings, so that the pool can um, run at optimal levels. While the weekend's weather forecast isn't looking too promising, Aquatics team lead Michael Kruger is still expecting some brave swimmers to make a splash. He says the pool's usually kept at around 28 degrees, but even with the warm inviting temperatures, the weather still has a huge impact on their season. If it is a nice hot season like it was last one, we did have a really good season when the weather turned. Um, but we, yeah, we're not in control of that. We do try our best. Staff are hoping to see many swimmers come and take a dip at the opening this weekend, kicking off their season, which ends in early April as we come into winter. In Dunedin, the South Today. FIRKNA, still to come on the South Today. Top Kiwi darts players are heading down country for the South Island Masters. And Bluff school kids are busily learning and growing through their holidays at a Southern Youth Festival. risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. This is the real deal. Everything's reduced. Must go sale on now. There's 30% off lounge, dining and occasional furniture. John's taken 40% off beds and bedroom. And over 1,000 items are at half price. Plus pad off over 18 months interest free. Must go sale on now. Strictly limited time. Only at John's Furniture Warehouse, Stafford Street. Where did you get that furniture from? Stafford Street. And my mate John. Concern Otago, we offer a range of services to support Otago seniors to age well with dignity and independence. We provide social work support, visiting service, health promotion and social activities. Check out what we have on offer at ageconcernotago.com. 
Aero, used by Australia's top bowlers with their unique Z-Scoop grip that redefines the game. Machined with robotics for unparalleled accuracy, Aero, same line, every time. Tēnā welcome back. Some of New Zealand's top darts players are bringing their talents down south, looking to bag themselves a few ton 80s. This year's South Island ILT Darts Masters is returning to Invercargill, with preparations already underway in the southernmost city. Southland's best darts players polishing up their skills ahead of their big tournament. They'll be hoping to hear the iconic as they prepare for the South Island ILT Darts Masters competition's second year in Invercargill. Caden Half Stubby Milner is among some big names that will be competing at the event and he's looking forward to going against some of the country's top players. It's the biggest dart tournament probably in the South Island I'd say. I've um, got all New Zealand's best players competing so it's pretty cool to be involved in that. New Zealand darts legend Warren Perry has been playing the sport for around 40 years with his motivation at an all-time high for his return to the competition. There's eight invited players and there's eight players that play off the other spots. And we get to play each other. And... World-ranked darts player Darren Dummigan is amazed at the organisation of the event, hoping it'll inspire more young people to get involved in the sport down south. The youth coming through here is amazing. Um, the effort that's been put in has been... Um, well, it shows. There's a big prize pool for this year's South Island ILT Masters Darts competition as players look to take aim at the tournament in mid-October. In Invercargill, the South Today. No school doesn't mean you can't have fun with your friends and one youth festival is proving exactly that. Rangatahi from across Southland are busy in Bluff, kicking off their holidays with a number of activities while offering a helping hand. Getting together to have some good old-fashioned fun. The Rangatahi Zone has been taking over Bluff this week with Southland youngsters gathering from all across the region. It's the second year the Free Youth Festival has been held, offering a range of activities from a smash-it room to arts and crafts. It's very important for our rangatahi to have a space, um, I guess, during the holidays, especially when they might not be connected with their friends um, because school's closed for, the, for two weeks and um, their parents may be away at work during the days. Free buses to the festival are on offer for children around Southland, bringing them to the town from Gore, Tuatapiri and Winton. The event also includes the Waiarua Zone, a supportive space to give young people the opportunity to keep their mental health in check. This event is, was put on last year um, due to a tragic event where um, there was a, the loss of four young lives uh, in Invercargill um, due to a car accident and, and three of those young people were from Bluff um, and so they really affected uh, the community really big. More than 70 local organisations helped fund the Rangatahi Zone, hoping the fund support system will help young people make positive decisions and choices. The Free Youth Festival is set to wrap up on Friday in Bluff, the South today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. Bird Rescue Dunedin is flying through turbulence as a complaint to the council threatens some aviaries. Canterbury firefighters get a step ahead of the busy upcoming summer season, upskilling their fire safety methods. And temperatures are on the rise at Dunedin's St Clair Hot Salt Water Pool, ready to make a slip splash for Sunday's open day. And now we'll look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT and we welcome back Associate Editor Joe Simpson. Hello Joe. Hi. What can we expect in Thursday's paper? Um, a Dunedin father can finally speak out about his two years of terror after being cleared of serious violence charges. Right. Um, we have a 10 year old Belle Clue, the boy with diabetes who was left scared and crying after a local cafe refused to give him sugar. Oh, okay. And we have a dog hearing in Invercargill where a woman has had 70 one complaints against her and her dogs. 
Wow, that's a lot. Gosh, okay, well, thank you for coming over and sharing, Joe. We look forward to reading tomorrow. Thank you. Time now for a look at the weather. The South Today weather, proudly brought to you by MoreMap, the skin cancer detection specialists. Looking at the situation, several days of cold southwesterly airflow starts tomorrow with frequent strong winds about the Otago coast and showers right across the region. Heading to the top of the South Island, it looks like a fine day with 14 up in Nelson and Greymouse but it will be quite windy with gusty southwesterlies and the cool winds head to Christchurch too with a few showers and the day's high will be 13. Travelling to South Canterbury and North Otago. Southwesterlies with a few showers in Ashburton and Uamaru with highs of 13 tomorrow, while Timaru in the middle is dry, windy and cloudy with 14 degrees. Heading westwards to the central lakes, the cool winds continue. Uh, they'll be moderate southwesterlies through here with some patchy cloud and highs of 13 degrees in Queenstown, Wanaka and Alexandra. Heading further south, expect 11 degree highs with fresh south westerlies and showers from time to time in these spots tomorrow. That's Gore, Balclutha and the Catlins. Across to Invercargill, cloudy with showers and down to 7 overnight. Tomorrow's cold with southwest winds, light showers and a high of 11. And Friday is still a bit showery too with fresh winds and a cooler high of 9. And finally, heading to Dunedin. Cloudy tonight as it drops to 8. Thursday's looking overcast with light changing winds in the morning before a cold blast in the afternoon before sunshine takes over and takes the high to 13. Friday's wet to start with northwesterlies turning to southwesterly winds up to 15 and a showery on and off afternoon. And that's the news this Wednesday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz. You can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand. And you can also follow us on Facebook. Just search for The South Today NZ to see our favourite stories from around the regions. We'll see you again tomorrow. Ka kite o popo. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air. The South Today Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with MOLMAP, the skin cancer detection specialists. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a MOLMAP. MOLMAP is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Living Well Disability Resource Centre, a not-for-profit charitable organisation and your one-stop shop for information and resources to help you retain independence. We offer a wide range of assistive products from jar openers to mobility scooters and provide assessments for Total Mobility, the half-price taxi scheme. Come and see the friendly team. You'll find us on the corner of George and Bath Streets, ground floor of Burns House. sale on now! There's 30% off lounge dining and occasional furniture. John's taken 40% off beds and bedroom. And over 1,000 items are at half price. And my mate John. UPVC Windows and Doors is a local Dunedin company who manufacture, install and service everything they make. Sign up this month for a free glass upgrade. Call UPVC Windows and Doors today. Every day the team at Gillian supports grieving families at their time of need, from answering your questions to organising a farewell that reflects the wishes of your loved one. We can help. Call Gillian's today. Drama. Competition. Rivalry. Marketing. Numbers. Atmosphere. Power. Fight. Attack. Intuition. Love. Hate. Money. Cash. Millionaires. Fans. 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 And fans. <laughs> oh boy.